in New York City, you have like about five popular pastry shop. The first is being French, that's gonna be Italians. Then you're gonna have the Japanese, very recently very popular, Korean. And then you have a Chinese bakeries like Focus in Taiwan and mainland. We are none of those. You know, we are, we are from Southeast Asia. We eat very different. You know, our ingredients are very different. If you want to go to Southeast Asia pastry shop in the city, they not exist. They're none. Where do you go for all these flavors? Kuwait is like more like a, you could have it in the morning as breakfast, afternoon tea, or supper, like after dinner. So you like a, it's a whole day. <laughs> you Kuwait, can get Kuwait it. is a culture. Yeah, culture. Kuwait is a whole day culture. Like you can eat any time of the day yeah. as a snack or sweets. Hi, I'm Celeste Tan. Hi, my name is Morgan Anthony. We are the founder of Lady Wong. Based in New York City. Lady, Lady Wong is a Southeast Asian focus pastry shop. It's like the Kuei, we call it in Malaysia. Uh, we have traditional and non-traditional pastries that actually are native to Southeast Asia. There's like millions of people enjoying these flavors. Like, there was like 60 million people in Thailand or 90 people for 90 million, million people from uh, Vietnam or 30 million people from Malaysia. Like, they just grew up with this. I say this is super underrated. I say there's no reason for us to try to make this as a fusion and try to make up a version of what it's going to fit into New York. We don't want to do that. I think a quid generally regard as, a, as like a street food. In, in Southeast Asia, we are very textural people. Like when you have that, that pandan custard on top, you have to have the glutinous rice at the bottom. Like it's giving that texture bites and the creaminess and the chewiness. So they're like, they're like, they're soft. The rice is cooked perfect, you know. They're not falling apart when you take them out. You know, you could see like the rice kind of like a stretch, like they're cooked. And when you bite them, they have salty layer at the top and the bottom is a sweet layer and they have like kind of like a pudding texture. But I also feel like a lot of our, our Western audience or, or for Americans, sometimes they feel like this like a jelly, wobbly <laughs> type of a texture that probably they're not very familiar with. Yeah. They're, um, spongy. they're nice spongy, they're soft, spongy. you could see the crust, you know. But people take a like just quick bite on something like without really like I always tell them this cake example like it's called talam. It has like a thick uh, coconut layers and and sweet brown sugar layer at the bottom. When you just eat the coconut layer, there's no sugar and it's just salty. You have to so do it eat the both both together. Together. So we kind of like teach people how to eat and so on. I I I think East Village probably the best place we could have opened the place. It's working on all this like texture, you know, uh, it has to, it has to like soft and you know, so, like it's obviously it's peelable. So, but because of the New York weather, these textures are sometimes like hard to like achieve. Core recipes for Lady Wong's actually uh, come from uh, Indonesia, Malaysia, Singapore, Singapore, mm -hmm. Thai, uh, Vietnam. Philippines and uh, Burmish, um, but it could easily span like, you know, uh, half a dozen countries. As we grow older, uh, we started to really appreciate uh, where we come from, the flavors that we came from. You know, like we say, like if, if anybody want to do this, like some sort of a full swing, uh, you know, uh, this humble, timeless flavor of Southeast Asia, it's got to be us. Hello everyone, uh, welcome to our basement kitchen. This is a kitchen that, um, that we did all the R&Ds, uh, initial recipes. We usually lay down the ingredients the way you see right here, from pandan, you know, banana leaves. You have all these different type of flowers that we have. So this is a pandan leaf. This particular one comes from uh, Vietnam. Um, a pandan, a pandan is a native to Southeast Asia. It has, we call it uh, Indonesian vanilla, a Southeast Asian vanilla. It has a very strong, um, some sort of a floral, grassy vanilla note. Eventually, it will fragrant the whole rice. That's kind of the whole idea. So we're gonna put them in the steamer. 
The most popular dessert that we make right now is called Sri Mukha. It has a pandan custard, it has also rice at the bottom. The direct translation meaning of Sri Mukha means a pretty face. So the, the custards are made out of the simple ingredients, sugar, eggs, just like the creme brulee you make. Um, but the only special ingredients that we're gonna, we're gonna add here is the pandan. When people want Southeast Asian, they want pandan. Like I would say like 99% like of menu or items has a pandan. If you have a pandan allergy, you can't come to Lady Wong. You know, like, like it's, that's what we use for everything. Finally, we're gonna add the uh, coconut milk. While the rice steaming, we will start to prepare the dried blue pea flour from Malaysia. Color will release very quickly. Uh, at, at this point, the rice is done. We've been steaming them for like last 30 minutes. So we're gonna take the whole rice. That's awesome. We're gonna season with, with salted coconut milk first. So uh, the whole thing started February, uh, February 2021 uh, during Chinese New Year time. We're going through this some sort of like a, 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 a you know, a, we, we, we say it like some sort of a quid depression. Why? So, uh, because we usually travel back to Malaysia and Singapore during that time, that's Chinese true. New Year, to yeah. be with the yeah. family. Yeah. Um, that's where like, she made a pineapple cookies mm -hmm. and she made kueh and so on. And she's like, listen, Celeste, um, if we're missing it, we can't go home. A lot of people can't go home either because every time we make these pastries, there's always tons left over. So that's how the whole thing started. Like, you know, we have to make by the tray, so we want to give it away. So we put it on the social media, and that's how the whole thing started. We, we love like a thick srimuka, which has a lot of custard. I'm from Malaysia, uh, Johor Bahru. I'm from uh, Kedar, uh, which is a, uh, a northern state, so very close to Thailand. And we moved here probably almost 17 years right now is going to be Probably after two and a half hours, you may want to check, and you kind of gently you move, and you see that it's not jiggly, they're nice and they're shiny. Yeah. Uh, although we're growing up eating all these pastries, but we are not growing up making them. Although both of us are shaft and we always cooked and travel around the world and so on, but this is not, I mean, you just take things for granted. Daddy, what are you making? Uh, this one's right here is a turtle. I love turtles. We never in our wildest dream that we thought we can open up our... We're like gonna a, make way. It's a, almost a forgotten uh, arts and skills and it's a craftsmanship. That's for sure. <laughs> oh, this is really good and tragic. <laughs> it's like a very small window that you see yeah. that Kuwait has like really beautiful. So we figuring out like what is that window. Today we are going to make some rainbow lapis. Okay. It's a very daring move for like me and my wife to open up uh, something so different in the New York City. It was like almost like a going against the grain. Uh, it's very meaningful and uh, special for our family. They were they were really surprised when we told them that hey, we opening the K shop. And then uh, my brother, oh wow, like in New York City, really? <laughs> people people eat Kuwait in New York. Yeah. You know, so we want to make it very accessible to everybody. We try not to discriminate. Kuwait doesn't discriminate. We have a kind of a long way to go and learn because a lot of these people that makes all these quay, they do this for generations. Sometimes that's one of the reasons that we go through the hard way of learning it. Because we are chef, we figure it out, but this is just the beginning. That's it for this episode of Food Curated. I'm Liza DeGia. Be sure to connect with us on social media and eat more stories. I'll see you next week.